Sorry? Starting at verse 15. Really. Okay. So, uh, what was your point initially? So we, we believe that's foretelling the coming of Muhammad. Yeah, so that was my, my question is what makes you think that that's talking about? Because uh, the qualities the verse mentions fit no one else except Muhammad, can you, historically speaking. Can you show me? Um, okay. When it says that I will raise you a prophet from your brethren, okay, um, the term brethren can refer to Israelites and non Israelites, in particular the Arabs. Because the same term in the Bible refers to idiomites. Well, idiomites. Are you aware of that? Yeah, yeah. Well, it does talk about idiomites. Um, and they were Arabs. Yeah, but um, number one, have you got evidence that Muhammad's claim to descend from Ishmael is, is a genuine claim? Is there evidence yes, to absolutely. That? Absolutely. What's your, what's your evidence? Um, firstly, to prove my argument, Muhammad doesn't have to be a descendant of Ishmael. Are you aware okay. of that? So who are you saying he's a... He's, he's, a, he's an Arabian prophet. Yeah. So just to, just to respond to your point, I don't have to prove to you that Muhammad was a direct descendant of Ishmael. He was. I will prove that to you. But I'm just simply giving you a side point that I don't even have to prove to you that Muhammad, peace be upon him, was a direct descendant of Ishmael. I don't have to. Uh, because the Bible uh, doesn't put that condition. No, okay. but, but it does say brethren, and the, the context seems to be quite clear when it says brethren. Well, he was an Arab. Muhammad was, Muhammad was definitely an Arab. Whether he was yeah. a descendant of Ishmael or not uh, can be yeah, addressed. I hate this rain. Uh, Very distracting. Well, uh, we call it the mercy of God. <laughs> <laughs> when we don't have it, we're, yeah, we're, we're praying for it. Yeah. And you're from Australia, from Australia. recently, you know? Yeah, yeah. People were praying for rain. Yeah, you know, most. Caleb, by the way? Uh, Nice to meet you. Uh, what, Ke Adnan? Adnan, yes. Adnan. Adnan. And recently, you know, Muslims came out to pray for rain. Uh, so that, so that, okay. yeah, and, and, and uh, cool. it was a good human endeavor. Why don't we read the verse? Yeah. And then talk about it. Absolutely. So I why mean, don't I start um, uh, verse 14 to. Actually, I don't even have it yet. Let me get the Before you read, I mean, I want to quickly highlight something that we don't read biblical verses in isolation. What we do is we read them in, in light of other biblical uh, verses. Uh, so we'll read the Bible, or we we'll try to read the Bible holistically, although Bible is patchwork. Uh, even biblical scholars have repeatedly highlighted. Well, the text, uh, text of Christians is another issue. What, the passage that I quoted from the Quran okay. uh, was in what they have of the Torah and the Gospel. I understand. The question I am trying to address is, can we read the Bible as a uniform text from Genesis to Revelation? No. None of the Christian scholars, none of the Jewish scholars ever claim that. You have what to do read you mean by a uh, because the uh, Bible, currently as it is, is patchwork. Verses yeah, have been put, right. verses have been put together uh, by different people in different places at different times, right? And this is very, very clear. Yeah, as I, think, far as, I think we're talking about a different topic. Yes, yeah. you're right. Well, you're right, but that topic is directly relevant to the prophecies not, we're not discussing. Not really, because what I'm trying to say is that um, in Surah 7, 157. In Surah 7, 157, it says that you will find written in the uh, described in the Torah and the Gospel, uh, yes. the, the unlettered prophet. Yes. Uh, yes. And a lot of Muslims point to Deuteronomy 18. No. And we it point says to in other... what they have of the Torah and the Gospel. We, we point to other passages as well. But, so but, when... Yeah, but you do point to Deuteronomy 18. We do. It's, right. it's one of so them. So my yes. point is, is that yeah. uh, if we take that, then. We look at that passage, you know, especially starting at verse 14 and 15. What is the evidence there that that's talking about Muhammad? And I wanted to read read the passage. Out. It doesn't mention Muhammad. It, it does not. Yeah, it it describes, does not mention Muhammad. You. It gives you it gives you uh, uh, ideas. It points to the direction of a it? prophet. Yeah, a prophet coming. Why and, don't I read and, it? and wait, uh, so so that we have a fruitful discussion very quickly. You you uh, you can read it. Why are we saying? That Deuteronomy 18:18 18, 18 is still unfulfilled as late as the period of Jesus, when yeah. Jesus was I don't walking. I think it is unfulfilled. Okay, that's something we can talk about. Yeah. Uh, okay, if it was fulfilled, who was it fulfilled in? Jesus. Jesus. Okay. You're saying Deuteronomy 18:18 18, 18 is. I mean, is, I'm just going to say it was Paul in Muhammad. Okay. Right? Now that's the point we, we need to address. Instead of going into long. Uh, but we need to read the passage. Exercises. We need to read the passage first. Yes, okay, okay go ahead. Go ahead. Right? Fair, that's fair enough. Go ahead. Read the passage. I'm reading and from the can... NIV, right? But I will, instead of saying fellow Israelites, I'll say brethren. Right? If, if it's not too 
troublesome. Can we get can we get an umbrella? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you, okay, thank you. Okay. So, yeah, no, this is better. Verse 15 of chapter 18 of Deuteronomy. The Lord okay. your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among you, from your fellow Israelites or from your brethren. Okay. Okay, this translation I don't know. Yeah, yeah. We say from brethren. Is right? that in brackets? No. no. From, this is from your NIV, which is very theologically, very much theologically driven. I don't I know. If you, I think it's a good translation. But no, it's a good translation. I, I agree with that. But, but, but you I'm know that, just say that term Israelites. I'm just happy to say brethren for you. I'll say brethren. Oh, no? so when did, why brethren. did you say fellow Israelites? Because it says it here. But I was just but saying, it's brethren, not, it's for not your in the sake, I'll say brethren. Yeah, I agree. The Hebrew is brethren. So, so I think so, the meaning so, is fellow Israelites. That's why it's translated okay. that way. What, what I'm trying to highlight is you but just read you just read something which is not in the Hebrew text. Do we agree? No, I think that is in the Hebrew text. I think it is saying fellow from Israelites. Yeah, it is saying fellow Israelites. No, it's not. When there. it says brethren in that context, the no, meaning no, 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 is fellow no, 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 no. We can debate the, that point. Wait, the we word, can debate that point. The, the word, the words fellow Israelites is missing completely from the Hebrew text from says, all manuscripts. It says brethren, but the context of yes. brethren is no, fellow this Israelites. This is this is something you're imposing on it. No, this is something because that breth is brethren just really is a very meaning. general term, uh, which we 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 can talk about. It can mean Israelites, no doubt. Let's it can go. mean Israelites. Let me change it it to can King also James mean non Israelites. Oh, well, how will King James sort you? Will that be any good for you? Oh, let me read it, King James. Right? No, but why don't we go to Hebrew? Isn't that Well, better? we know the word is brethren. Exactly. Right? Okay. I, I've no now, problems now, that. Now, now, the issue is. But we haven't read the passage. Let's, leave, let's yeah. read the passage. No, because uh, if you're going to read something which is not in Hebrew, I, I will have to okay, highlight that's that. Fine. Okay. Yeah. okay. The, the Lord, which is Yahweh, in Hebrew, all right, capital, thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee, of thy brethren, like unto me. Unto him you shall hearken, according to all that thou desirest of the Lord thy God in Horeb in the day of the assembly, saying, Let me not hear again the voice of Yahweh, my God, neither let me see this great fire any more, that I die not. And when the Lord said this, and when the Lord said unto me, they have well spoken that which they have spoken, I will raise up for them a prophet from among their brethren, like unto thee, and I will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. So the first thing I wanted to point out here is that it says there has to be a prophet like Moses. Oh, good, good. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we agree. So, so, so here, context, let's, let's agree, mean? let's agree first. Uh, the term is brethren, not Israelites. Yes, that's fine. Yeah. Okay, and a prophet who will come in the future will be a prophet like Moses. Yeah, but okay. there's a context to it. Though. All right, what's the context? The context is verse uh, 15, okay, which where it says, yeah. Read it, uh, uh, sorry, verse 16, according to all that you desired of the Lord your God yeah. in Horeb, the day of the assembly, saying, let me not hear mm. the voice of the Lord my God, neither let me see this great fire anymore that I die not. So the context is, they, when they went to the Mount Horeb, God spoke out of uh, out of the fire to the people, but they didn't want to hear anymore. Okay. And so they wanted Moses to speak to God and then bring the message to them sure. from God. That's sure. the context here. So that's amazing. That fits well into well, Ma the, the profile of Muhammad. So, we'll so we'll let's just how. clarify. Yeah. So Moses, in other passages in Numbers, it says that Moses would go and speak. Thank you. Oh, sorry. 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 I'll get the other one. Moses would go and speak to God. Yeah. God would appear to him. He appeared to him in the burning bush. He appeared to him in a pillar okay. of cloud. Okay. He would speak to him. He would give him the commands, and then he would take that command okay. and give it to the people. Okay. That is how Moses. My, my understanding. That's what it means to be like Moses. That, there's nothing else in the context. That's what all it says about what it means to be like thank, Moses. Thank you for that. Um, I understand um, your 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 concerns about this. How we understand this particular verse and verses around this verse is that not every single aspect of um, Moses' life has to be fulfilled in this coming prophet. For example... Yes, just that he, one point. Uh, okay, there are, there are a few things that are very similar to Moses in Muhammad and those things cannot be found in Jesus. Yeah. Let me explain, let yeah, me explain. But this, all this is saying is that like Moses, all, yes. it, all it means... So l l how, let's see how thing. Moses, how, how Muhammad was like Moses. Let's talk about no, that. Yeah, but that's irrelevant. Let's say he was 98% like Moses and Jesus was and like Jesus 20% was, like Jesus, Moses. Right? Well, yeah. that, that, that's not really relevant. The, the point that is being made here in verse 16 is that like Moses is what they asked, what Israel asked. Like Moses? No, yeah, yes. but what, no, they didn't ask like Moses. They yeah. asked yeah. that Moses would speak to God for them. Right. 
and that he would speak directly to God yes. rather than God speaking directly to them. Okay. So when it says like Moses, the concept... So this is exactly is what happened clear. with Muhammad. No, Muhammad spoke number one to the angel Gabriel. Right. And also the Qurans were... The revelations no, were no, revealed we, we know to Muhammad, him no, you're in you're chances wrong. and things like you're that. You're mistaken about that. Muhammad did speak to God When I read Ahmed did that, he was very clear that he... Uh, the, uh, the, uh, well, let me clarify something. Uh, Christians, our brothers around the world, they have to move on from Ahmad Didat. Sheikh Ahmad Didat did what he did and we appreciate his work but he wasn't he wasn't infallible. We don't follow him in everything. We do agree we do, do agree with a lot of things he did and said. We don't agree with a lot of what he he, he said, right? So, so let's move on from Sheikh Ahmad Didat. Our Christian so brothers around the world. How did God not just some, let, let me explain. some one time but the general way in which God Just like I just like I allow just like I allowed you to explain. Let me explain now. Okay. Okay. Now Muhammad peace be upon him, did speak to God uh, God directly when he went on the night journey, Mi'raj, he had a conversation with God. Yeah. We, we have been told in prophetic tradition, Do you know what and it is, it's, uh, we have reports and de the details are there. Five daily prayers were made obligatory directly by God himself and given to Muhammad. Okay, and there was the, the, the debate, the debate is about whether Muhammad, peace be upon him, saw God directly without any curtains or any any barriers between okay. right or he spoke to God with this with, <laughs> but he did speak to God okay, okay. So, he spoke so, to God so, so that's fulfilled but is that the, okay it's no, no 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 I all no. I have to I all I have to show is he spoke to God no that's not correct okay it's not correct so the passage is very clear that God began to speak to Israel by giving the Ten Commandments okay by giving his voice from heaven and the people said to stop and they wanted from then on the revelation to come by Moses speaking directly to God and then bringing that message to them. Okay. Now, it may be, according to the Islamic tradition, that one time Muhammad spoke to God directly. That's not the point. The point is the revelation that is revealed, all the revelation that Moses revealed, came from him directly communicating with God. Okay. Muhammad, you cannot say that generally... So, he, so, so, you, so are you an saying angels, to the rule. angels had you, no, with, no, no you, role just with Moses? Finish. What you're saying... Are you saying angels never came to Moses? Now, let's let me just clarify what you're. No, no, saying. I, I, because I'm not. I'm, I'm, I'm the, turning. The I'm turning you your argument. I'm turning your yeah. argument around the other yeah, way. Yeah, but I just want to clarify. If, if I, no, 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 I'm not talking to you. No, no, I'm not no, talking no, to you. No, sorry, 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 no, sorry. He doesn't need your help. If angel did not come to Moses, then why you are exaggerating? Okay. Can you? Can you? Am I talking to you, sir? Am I talking to you? If angel did not come to Moses, does he need your help? Why you are exaggerating? Does he need your help? Does he need your help? Does he need your help? Does this he need your help? Speaker's corner. He's, do, he's doing this the is speaker's corner, <laughs> and so everybody powerful. has a right to speak. Okay, okay. If you, we'll continue with our discussion. You, okay, we'll ignore him. Sorry, we'll ignore him. Sorry, yeah. Sorry, yeah. Yeah. He's, he's not. He's, he's being indecent, and we'll continue with our decent discussion. So. Um, with regards to this question, if I can show you that Moses had had interaction with the angels, then your point, your argument falls on his face. No, not because, really. Because then both can be showed that there were, there were times when Muhammad spoke to God and there were times when he didn't speak to God directly. Likewise, there were times when Moses speak, spoke to God and there were times when he didn't speak to God uh, directly. So, what, what does that show us? That your, your argument, your criteria cannot be used as a rule of thumb in this case, what can be used as a rule of thumb are the indications or are the uh, are the, the, the conditions given by God. What is the condition? One condition or few conditions actually. Can we, we're moving, uh, I don't let me come. On. I don't want to move on from this point. Uh, no, though. why not? Because, because conditions. We haven't finished. It. I want to respond to what you I, I have responded to your point already. Okay, so can I respond to, but, that, yeah, to that point? Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So Moses um, was not squeezed by Moses. <laughs> yeah. He wasn't. He wasn't squeezed three times. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And even <laughs> Moses was able to read and write. So, um, yeah, so what I'm trying to say with the, when you read that passage, um, there may have been an occasion according to the Islamic tradition that Muhammad spoke directly to God, right? I, I don't agree with that, but it's in your tradition, right? But as a general oh, no, no, rule... You, of course you don't agree with... Yeah, of course, yeah. All of but it. as a general rule... You don't agree with anything we yeah, have. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. But as a general rule, <coughs> yeah. the, the manner in which God communicated his revelation was not by Muhammad speaking directly to God. Okay. Whereas, let me just finish, just to give you the opposite. Yeah. Whereas with Moses, 
there may be have been occasions where he may have um, spoken to angels or whatever, but the majority, the general rule of him receiving his revelation was that he received it directly from God. That's only with the Ten Commandments. The, That's only with the Ten Commandments. No, the Ten Commandments were given by God. So Torah, Torah, to Torah was entirely given directly by God. Do you show me in the Bible? Well, show me in the Bible the well, Torah, yeah. five books, or whatever they contain was given directly I've, I've by just, God. I've just shown you. No, that Ten Commandments. I agree. Ten Commandments. This is just like Muhammad. Just like Muhammad was given certain commandments by God, obligation of prayer, right, directly by God. Torah was given directly by God to yeah. Moses. Yeah. Was was the law in its entirety given by God directly? I think or, so, yeah. Show me I, I the think, evidence. I, no, what I'm trying the to evidence, say, please. Sorry, let me take that back. What okay. I'm trying to say okay. is that as a okay. general rule, yes. the, the revelation now you're that Moses rules. received. Yes. Yeah, as, a, as I'm talking about a general rule, because this right. is the, the, the general characterization of Moses, okay. according to that passage, to be like Moses okay. is to be one who speaks directly to God okay. and receives now, his revelation. Now clearly we don't agree. Right. Well, so let's let's move on. Passage. Let's let's move on. Passage. Let's move on Even to the Moses, conditions now. Okay. Moses was okay. Given. So let's go. So let me show you. Was given let, let me show you. Okay. Listen, you've listen, made your point. Listen. I've made my point. Are these Christian banners? Are these Christian banners? Are these Christian banners? In the burning bush. Are these Christian banners? Are these Christian banners? Are these Christian banners? Are these Christian banners? Moses received a revelation in the burning bush. Are these Christian banners? In the burning bush. And special name of God. A name of God. Thank, Thank you. you. I think that man is... Uh, okay. Um, so the next condition would be a, a prophet like thee. That's the first one. Yeah, right? let's talk about the it next, very quickly. The, the, well, we've just both given our opinion on that. Right? We yeah. can move on. Yeah, yeah, Otherwise absolutely. We'll be here. Yeah, absolutely. So the next point is from the midst of thee. Okay. From the midst of thee. Okay. Who's he now, speaking to? Okay. He is speaking to the Israelites. So yeah. from the midst of the Israelites. Okay, yes. Okay. Now, what's the Hebrew for that? Are you aware of the Hebrew? Yeah, the Hebrew term? word is kereb, I think. Okay. Uh, the kereb, which means in your midst, means or it actually can refer to your inner no, parts. No, 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 no. If I'm wrong, okay. I just got kereb, to... Kereb means uh, close to you. Okay. It the actually same can word, mean your The same word is in Arabic. I'll Karib, what, I'll Karib up, means I'll someone literally. close to you. Someone close to you. So again, I will literally pull up the word. Okay, I'll please do. And so you've already given me the word. I will literally pull up the Hebrew. Yeah, okay. Go ahead. So we go to um, okay. Hebrew. Because a lot of the biblical translations are theologically driven. These translations, just so like many I'm, translations I'm of the Quran. The Hebrew for you. I'm, I'm being consistent. I'm just pulling like up the many Hebrew translations of the Quran. So they from are, your midst. Yeah. We'll click on it. From your midst. Yeah. The Hebrew word. It's uh, Kirba. Oh, so, so, yeah, it's, it's giving me. Let me okay. just bear with me a yeah. sec. So let's click on this. Okay. In the Arabic, Arabic, in the Arabic language, we have the same word for closeness of relations. Okay, Koraba. Okay, or Akra, uh, so yeah. the definition oh, sorry, of Karab, Karab, Akra, Akra. The yeah. definition of Karab is midst or inward parts. It can it refers even to your inner organs. Okay. Okay. Right. So when he says okay. in the midst of thee, he's talking to the Israelites and he's saying the prophet will come from in your midst. Okay. No, no. That okay. Inner okay. parts. Uh, and other uh, uh, meanings. Can you read other meanings? Among body, uh, wait, 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 devoured, entrails, heart, herself, That's inner right, thought, inner. inside, yeah. inward yeah. feelings, inward part, right. inward thought, inwardly, so middle, midst, within, within you, within our, our land, within their land. Okay, go, go down, please. Okay. This is another dictionary. Okay, another which is dictionary. what, what is this? Abs sorry. Inward part, midst. Okay, yeah. and keep going. Inward parts of the human body. Okay. So the okay. context, the, 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 okay. the, the, the real way, meaning is within you. Okay. Within you, the, the Israelites word, that he's speaking uh, to. Are you aware that uh, Arabic and uh, Hebrew are sister yeah, languages? Honestly, yeah. I'm just going to yeah. go by a dictionary. I'm not going to go by Arabic. Okay, or okay. Arabic. I can get uh, get out another dictionary and show you. Okay, show that, me a dictionary that, that, that gives that, that word the, the term Karib, Karib or Kerb. Yeah, that's Arabic you're talking about. No, no, no. You're committing the phonic fallacy. I think that happened here in the No, no, no. I'm not. I am not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not committing that phonic fallacy because I I know for a fact. The word Allah in Hebrew is an oak tree. <laughs> no, it's not. No, it's anyway, not. Anyway, I don't know. No, We've because the word, the, the word Allah, the, the word Allah comes from Elohim and Elahi, same term what? used by biblical yeah. personalities. Yeah. Elahim. El, El, El and Elohim. Yeah, no, El, 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 Elahi. Elahi. Al, Allah is Al Ilaha. Allah, yeah. the term Allah hey, is Al Ilaha. Ilaha is the word used by allegedly Jesus. Absolutely. I, I stand by my point. Karib. I'm saying Karib. Karib is actually Karib. 
in Arabic. Okay, yeah, but it mean means close. In Arabic. in Arabic, it means close. Okay, if any, if you ask any student the of Hebrew, Arabic, it means in the past. Uh, okay, no, the know, problem is, the problem is, uh, do you know Semitic languages? No, but I know other. Okay, people I know one know. of them. I know one of them. Uh, re I mean, uh, relatively, I know it relatively uh, well. Uh, I'm, I'm not an expert in the Arabic language. Okay, uh, but I'm a student of the language. Well, I'm I just have going to by study. the dictionary. Okay. So I got two dictionaries. We, we, we can, my we can, if, if, if you, you want, can come up with a dictionary, yeah, I, I will get it. And, and, and a Hebrew dictionary, not okay. Arabic. Yes, I will. I will. If we go to uh, this uh, dictionary, because this is But let's say is it Jacinius? Is it Jacinius? Which, which, which one? I'm doing Strong's and also uh, Brown's Driver Briggs. But let's okay. say hypothetically that's correct. Okay. Let's say hypothetically. So, so, so now we, we move on. Hypothetically, if that definition is correct, that means it has if, to come if from. If we keep moving on, you will see why we insist that this refers to a prophet. Okay, we'll move to the next one. Yeah. Yeah. Point, okay, right? so we've so done we've done a prophet like Moses. We've both given yes. our opinion. We've yes. done in your midst. Yes. We've both given our opinion. Yeah. Okay, yeah. the next one. Next one is. Let me just pull it up again. The next one is from your brethren. Yeah? Okay. Of thy brethren. Yes. So you see, we we of thy brethren. Okay. Now brethren here can mean Israelites, no doubt. Number one. Okay, so I believe hundred percent brethren can mean Israelites, and predominantly in the Bible, it means the Israelites. I'm being more honest than 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 you probably expect, okay. right? Yeah, yeah, okay, sure. yeah, and sure. and I'm not saying that you 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 would expect any worse from me because yeah, we've never had interaction before, right? Yeah. So I, I like to be as upright as possible yeah, sure, right. uh, in these sense. discussions. Sense. Okay, well. right. Unless I'm so, really pressed. But <laughs> exceptionally, exceptionally, the term has been used for non-Israelites. Okay. Yeah. But Edomites, for example, who were Arabs, the same term in the Bible has been used for brethren. Well, the word right? just means brother, so it can be used of um, any any. And this is where this so is Jacob and Esau were brothers. Okay. This is where I take you back to the term Karib, okay, or Karib, which means people who are close, right? For example, I'll give you an example very quickly. In the Quran, we have a verse. It doesn't mean that. We've gone through no, the dictionary. No, no, no. Wait, let, me, let, let me quickly explain. Let me quickly explain. Why yeah, I don't want to let you get away with saying it means something without getting. But let me explain, and you can disagree with me. No problem. Okay. In the Quran, we have a verse where it talks about people who uh, are to be revered or who are to be taken care of. Uh, who, or, or there's a hierarchy of respect and attention in the Quran. For example, we're talking about the Arabic wait, 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 wait. I'll, let me finish my point yeah. and you will see where I'm coming from. Okay. Semitic languages usually, um, you know, when they have the same words differently pronounced in those three Semit uh, Semitic languages, they usually mean the same thing. Okay. They usually mean the same well, thing. Okay. Yeah, I disagree they, with they, that. They, they, I just want to go and, by the And Semitic definition. languages, let me explain very quickly again. Semitic languages are, are very rich languages. A word can be used in different places or different contexts uh, for different meanings, for example. Let me quickly give you an example here. In the Quran, this verse, it states, you know, that you are to worship Allah and then وَبِلْ وَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانَ وَالْيَتَامَ uh, Sorry, وَذِلْ uh, قُرْبَى Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. <laughs> But you have to be patient because it's a, it's a, it's a discussion about languages, right? Dil Qurba in Arabic can mean your close relatives or your relatives, generally, your relatives, right? We're not talking okay. about Arabic. Okay. We're talking about Hebrew. And right. the Hebrew word is clearly referring to your inward parts, the word in your midst. Okay. It's kereb in Hebrew, which means you, you, you are insisting. Your inner you, organs. Okay, you, you are insisting that it means that. I am saying it, it, it has a wider meaning. I, I'm saying it has a wider You've meaning. You've not shown me any authority. I will. I will. I, not I, Arabic. I, my, okay. I, want in, I want Hebrew. Okay. Okay. Let me Google it. Can someone Google for me quickly? Uh, the Hebrew word for relatives. Hebrew word for relatives. Relatives. Okay, we will see. We will get to it right now. Okay. Let's let's establish this before we go. Hebrew word for relatives. And we will see. What is it? Uh, Did you see a transliteration? Uh, not that I can see. Go, go, go back up. My English dictionary, try that. Imma? Ready? No, relatives, generally, relative, not specifically, not mother or not father. 
uh, relatives. But relatives is going to be brother, brother and again. No, no, no. That's brother. Because that, you know, there is a, where's there is, the context there is a, words like there is a specific that, word. There Hebrew is a specific also. word for that in Hebrew, akha, okay, uh, which is very similar to the Arabic language, akhi, akhun, okay. So I just it, think, what's the dictionary definition? You know, what's the dictionary say? The problem is in dictionaries. Yeah, when yeah. you go to dictionaries, what is the word? Karo. There you go. But where did you get that from? Okay. Uh, hang on. This is probably from a relative. relative. Literally. Here you so, see. Yeah, yeah. It gives yeah, you but, all but, the words in Hebrew who, that are refer, refer to kinsmen. But what's this website? Kinsmen. Who are they? Kinsmen, right? I, yeah, I want. Kinsmen, I want, I want an. Relative. I want an authoritative okay. dictionary. Okay. No, no, no. Wait, wait. Look. We. There was website. no plan. This, this is not website. a conspiracy. It's a Jewish website. Yeah, it's a yeah, Jewish website. That still doesn't mean anything. Okay, I, I don't want an actual dictionary. Okay. Yeah. So, so this is not. This is sorry, not man. A I don't want to be rude or anything. I just want this a dictionary. Not, yeah. is, okay, no, no. Pull that out again, please. Now you gave me a dictionary. Yeah, I gave you. Okay. Different okay. Words, okay. And then I am you giving you. Down. This is not a dictionary. My claim. What was my claim? My claim was the term Qareb or Karib or Karib has wider meaning. You can't just. Uh, put one meaning to it and say that's the only meaning this word has. Semitic languages do not work like that. No, this is what it, you have it to does understand. Have other meanings, inward no. parts, your, your entrails. No. But what about relatives? Is that not a meaning? No, it's not a dictionary. Not so you, 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 you don't accept that? You yeah, don't no, have, I don't accept that. Not you, unless it's okay. a dictionary. Okay, okay. we, we leave some, it for the people now listening yeah, to us. They need to go and do their research and see whether relatives is one of the meanings of Qareb. And then in, we can in move the on Hebrew to the language, we can move on to the next brethren, part now. Right, I've made my point that these terms, a lot of the words in Semitic languages have wider meanings. You can't just pin them down. Um, you can't just pin them down and claim only one meaning. Okay, um, and I, and I never said that, that help because you. many. If yeah. I can do a speech as well, can like, I do a speech as well. Uh, no, I haven't so, done a speech. Yeah, you were just talking to the camera. But, okay, <laughs> okay, okay. Right. So the word kerab can have many meanings. It can yes. have um, Thank you. meanings of inward parts, like your entrails, Absolutely. things like that. Absolutely. That's what it, all the that's things the meaning. Yes. So it, it's talking about in your midst. You know, within you, it can but mean within is, a group of people. The question or within is, is you, one of the meanings relatives? That that is no. The meaning is not relatives. No. Okay, we will not move on until it's we find, uh, we we'll establish though. this. We will not move on until we establish, we, until we show our friend here that relatives is one of the meanings of Qareb in the Hebrew language. And if that's and the I case, want a dictionary. then, then I you want will, then will, dictionary. Okay, then will you admit that you're, yeah, look, your if you argument, can show me from a dictionary, we can, yeah. we can, okay, yeah. okay, yeah. Yeah. sure. Okay. I mean, you I'll know, have to find uh, something. I'm open to being correct. wrong. I just want to be. No, proved because wrong these correctly. discussions are very important. There are people watching out there, yeah, uh, and they need, they deserve. The, 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 the best knowledge that, that is yeah. You can show me out a, a Hebrew dictionary that can apply that word. Okay, so to, can you can you give, give me give me that to, to relatives? Um, then we can we can accept that. Can you check Jesenius? Who's that? Jesenius was a Hebrew dictionary. Okay, Jesenius. Okay. Jesenius. G E S E N I S. I think. Or N I U S. G E S S E N I U S. I think so. That's the senior Hebrew dictionary. Yeah, there you go. Hebrew grammar. Okay. Uh, I hope you find online, the word Koreb. Is it online? Okay. Or oh, just put spelling Koreb. Uh, Hebrew truck. I think it's going to take I'm claiming that one of the meanings of Koreb is relatives. Okay, and, you've, you've and, that and if said, that's true, I tell you what, if that's true, your argument crumbles. Okay, your argument. Crumbles. This is why we move on to the next point. Yeah, but let's just clarify. So if we, and if, even, if, I if think there is a dictionary yeah. out there that says it, great, you've won your point. If there isn't, you've lost the okay, point. Let's, okay, let's. Okay, and, and I, if there I'm so confident. I'm so yeah. confident. I will let people do their research. Okay, so would you be yeah. so confident to say that if the word kereb does not mean relatives, yeah. but it means in your midst or in your inner parts? No, those those are me those are that, meanings. Those yeah, but, but if there is no other meaning than that, or and your meaning is not then my, would you my, accept my, your my, argument? Then my argument. Okay, cool. Yeah, right, my, let's move my, on to brethren. Then, then. then I'm saying that that meaning is there, and if it's there, then people can actually okay. look at let it. Them look at Koreb, Q O R E B. And what's the name of the dictionary that you suggested? I, I'm, I'm, I, I don't know what uh, what the meaning of Koreb is in Jesenius. I want to check what yeah, Jesenius yeah. says. You spelled it for the camera, right? But uh, have you found any meaning of Koreb? If you put Koreb, for example, uh, Q O R E B. Oh, let the let the read start. Meaning we'll meaning on. of Koreb. Um, let the listeners do it. We'll move on. We'll move okay. On to because to find uh, 
meaning of words because on, people on need the, to do the, research anyway yeah, rather absolutely. than just listen to now to next point is brethren okay in the hebrew language what's the word there i want you to read the word and we're going to use the same method to reach the meaning of that particular word okay brethren What's the Hebrew word there for brother? Uh, I think I have the wrong word. Anyway. We're going on for you know we're going on for too long to address a very simple and straightforward matter. But if we have to go through this exercise, no problem. Okay, so now the it's the word ach. 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 Okay, as I said to you earlier. That brother, definition brother. Same word in the Arabic language. Countryman. Okay, no, brother, fellow, countryman. Fellow countryman, which is why the NIV translated a fellow is right. Okay, okay. And continue, what else? Uh, it's got, um, you want me to read them all out? Um, yeah, please. Alike, another, brethren, brother, brother with his brothers, brothers, brotherhood, brothers, brothers, <laughs> companions, countrymen, 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 fellow, fellow countrymen, fellow countrymen. Fellows, kinsmen, kinsmen, nephew, other relative, relatives. Etc. There you go. All these meanings, every single one of them supports my point. I'm saying, are the first first question, are the Arabs directly related to the Israelites? Uh, well, um, Ishmael was um, Isaac's uh, brother, therefore, and he was Jacob's uncle. Therefore, so he was uh, a relative. Um, yeah, he was a relative, okay. a distant relative. Okay. He was actually, now, the, and I think as well, when you look in the context, you've got the twelve tribes. We have to also remember that a valid option absolutely is I, that it's one of the twelve. We're, we're not tribes talking about them yet because my point is not about them. My point, I'm claiming yeah, so you're, that you're brethren point. here refers to the Arabs. Okay. I'm claiming that. Yeah, I'm okay. claiming, you're not. You're not accepting yeah. that, yeah. right? So you're saying it. Why do you say the Arabs? Where did you get the Arabs? Uh, the children of Ishmael. So, so what makes you think they're children of Ishmael? The Arabs? Yeah. Because Ishmael was in Paran. Paran is Arabia. According to the Bible, okay. Paran is Arabia. No, Paran, I don't think uh, Paran is Arabia. I think Paran, I'll show it to you from the Bible. Yeah, show me. Okay? Yeah, show me. Okay. First, do you accept that Ishmael was in Paran? Uh, I th I'd have to have a look, but... Um, Genesis 20, 21. Uh, sorry, 21. Chapter because I think, I think there's a whole bunch of scholarship okay. on whether or not the Ishmael... Uh, sorry, whether no, or no, not first, the first let, actually, first. Um, first, let Israelites. us establish. First, let us establish where Ishmael is. There were lots of people. The Jews okay. were in Paran, right? The Jews were in Paran. You had Christians in Paran. You had lots of people in Paran. Right? Okay. So it was so close to Africa. I'm saying you Ishmael was in Paran. There. You had heaps of people. Okay, no problem. But I'm, we're talking about Arabs, right? Right? Yeah, but what makes you think the Arabs, just because the Arabs are in Paran, 600 years after Jesus, which is over a thousand no, no, no. years no, no, no. after Ishmael. Arabs, Arabs I mean, Ishmael is what? Wait, wait. Ishmael are, is are you aware 2, of, 000, are, two and a half thousand years are, before are you Muhammad. Aware of, How can we say are that you that's... aware of archaeology of Arabia? Are you aware of it? Not a lot, no. Okay. I know a little bit, the Arabs, little bits and pieces. The Arabs are there on Babylonian inscriptions. Okay, no, yeah, but... Okay. No, this is, I, we're I talking about 8th century BC, bit. before the, Christ. Yeah, but the Babylonians right? actually refer to them as a mix of people from my, my memory of my study. Okay. And that they no, 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 actually, no. Ba it was Babylonians, a bit of a hodgepodge Okay, show me, things. show me where the uh, Babylonians look, are. Honestly, I don't know off the top of my head. I don't, you'd have what to prove your What we do have from Babylonian inscriptions, and Assyrian inscriptions, that the Arabs were seen as bandits. Right, robbers, yeah, people. Okay, well, hang on. And does it say Arabs? It it shows Arabs. You'd have it to shows show me in that. inscriptions. Yeah, but you'd have to okay. show me where it uses the term. Google Arabs. Google Babylonian uh, inscriptions of Arabs. I will see right now. You will see Arabs. Yeah, I want you to prove every point. I'm not going to give okay, you. Okay, reading. Okay, and all scholars are unanimous. This is a depiction of. So. I've read. I've read arguments that that there really was no certain. There is look that really Arabness from you, what you, I've you, read on you, scholarship you have an was attitude. created you have an after attitude. Islam I, I, began. I can see you have an attitude that anything I may present, you will not accept it. Well, I want okay. you to prove it. Uh, I will prove it. But yeah. if I cannot prove something to you because you don't want to accept anything I, I'm trying to prove, how can I prove it? Well, you, you would have to if, show me because some pe evidence. people out there they have to have this attitude of acceptance that okay if something is making sense it's reasonable okay let's but accept I just it. want some evidence okay. of what you're saying yes, I don't absolutely. want to just, I don't I'm want saying to be the Arabs words. were there before Christ eight seven you, I mean so we you have, can refer to the Arab you can have inscriptions that refer to the Arabs okay. as a people group as a united people group okay. descended from Ishmael okay now let You've me give you let me let, okay let, let's talk about the evidence let because me Ishmael let me give you the blow let me give you the blow uh, you will not be able to respond to. Okay. Open the Bible, please. 
I got my phone. <laughs> when was Isaiah revealed? About 700 years before Christ. Okay. When was I saying the Babylonian inscriptions come from? Uh, Assyrians. 8th century BC. I think, I think you were saying Babylonians, but I, think I said, you meant Assyrians. No, Assyrians and Babylonians. Okay, yeah. Both, okay. 8th century BC. Assyrians. I'm talking about Assyrians. 8th century BC. Yeah. And Isaiah was revealed. About 700. Uh, same time. BC, yeah. Approximately. Approximately. Yeah. Book of Isaiah. Yeah. Chapter 21. Verse 13. And it says Arabs, doesn't it? Let me just we will see. Shall, and what, read what, it loud, what please. Verse? Oh, sorry. verse 13. The chapter. Isaiah 21, verse 13. Okay, so read the, it. Uh, no, says, no, no, read it. Read yeah, it. I'll read it to you. Yeah. A, a prophet. A prophecy about Arabia in the book of Isaiah, which was revealed in the 8th century BC sometime. Uh, uh, on the prophet Isaiah same time I'm talking about when the Assyrians had inscriptions about Arabs okay my friend challenged me on that I have given him evidence from the Bible that the Arabs are mentioned at that time in the Bible okay so that the Arabs of the people I mentioned there in the Bible yeah. thank you okay. thank you so now you, you, where, you where are they, accept, where you, are they before we move on can you accept that you were clearly mistaken on that. Yeah, perhaps I was mistaken, yeah. Okay, now let's move on. Okay, so the Arabs are ancient and they are yeah, seen as like they mentioned. Okay, yeah. now keep reading this very passage. Okay. This passage will prove my point to you that Ishmael was in Arabia. Keep reading this, pa this passage. I will prove to you that this prophecy clearly refers to Muhammad. Not only this, even Deuteronomy 33, 2 and Isaiah 42, the entire chapter is talking about Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But those, okay, I mean, if we're spending against, so much time on this. This is a prophecy against the Arabs. Okay. Uh, a prophecy against Arabia. Yes. Your and what's the prophecy? Your caravans, uh, sorry, you caravans of Dedanites who camped in the thickets of Arabia bring water for the thirsty. You who live in Tamar bring food for the fugitives. They flee from the sword, sorry, from the drawn sword, from the bent bow and from the heat of battle. I think what it's saying is that keep keep, keep going, keep going. Yeah. I want I want to lead to a point. Okay. This is what the Lord. But let's just clarify what this is saying so far. Right? So no, no, we're, we're not discussing that, that prophecy yet. Okay, That's a prophecy yeah. for Islam, by the way. But we'll continue, continue. We'll talk talk about okay. it another time. All right. So I'm this, trying to lead to a point. This yeah. is what the Lord says to me. Within one year, as a servant bound by contract would count it, all the splendor of Kedar will come to an end. Okay. Kedar, that's uh, Petra. Uh, no, no, the survivors no, of the ark. Yeah, it is. When you click on it, it talks about the cleft of the rocks. That's that's clearly Petra. Okay. No, right. I mean, do you, are you sure you want to go into that? Yeah. Because we're, we're, we're going to spend another half an hour, and then we're going to come around yeah, half an hour later, and you're going to say, you know what, you you were right. You so, get you get so, one so, point right. Okay. You get one point no, right. No, 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 I don't. I humbly admit I, it, and no, you think no, that, no, that I'm, every point no, is right. Petra, Petra was built by Nabataeans. Yeah. Are you aware of that? Yeah. And who were the Nabataeans? Let's have a look, Kida, the word No, 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 Kida. wait. So are, word, you, are you aware that, 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 that Petra was built by Nabataeans? Look, I'm not sure. No, I'm I not am. Sure. I, I am. I can't, yeah, I you am. have to give me a source okay. for it. Okay. 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 Go on. What's your point? Let's just go. Let's, let's, let, let's let you make your point. If we stick to our points, then let's we can make some point. progress. Okay. Let's Kedar is in Arabia. Do you agree? According to the book of Isaiah. Yeah, it seems to be on the face value of this passage oh. that it's talking about uh, Kedar in Arabia. Seems to be. Are you sure? Seems to be. You just said seems to yeah, be. Yeah, well, it mentions Kedar, but it doesn't tell us where Kedar is, right? So uh, well, it's a prophecy about Arabia. Yeah, but we're not told exactly why, where well, no, no, Why is. is the Bible talking about Kedar in Arabia? Well, it's talking about them being judged. Okay. And who, who, where are they? According to this particular passage, so, where do you think Kedar is? So Kedar seems to be in Arabia. Okay, that's good. Who is Kedar now? Do you know who Kedar is? It, it's the Ishmaelites, yeah. No, no. Who is he? Oh, Kedar himself. Oh, yes. look, I'm not familiar with that. You okay. have to tell me. Let's go to uh, uh, Genesis 25, 13. Let's go. So you're going to go by the name of a city No, 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 no. Don't, don't a, jump the gun. Just, 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 just help me to, so that we can finish this very quickly. Okay. Okay. Genesis 25, 13. Genesis 25. I'll tell you who Kedar is. Are these the uh, sons of Abraham? Yeah? Okay. Uh, which These verse? are the sons of Ishmael. 
Oh, okay, right. That's good. Okay. What verse is it? 13. There, in front of you. There, yes. Okay, so they're Arabia, right? No, no, no. Yeah, these are the names of the sons of Ishmael. You're saying that. And what are the names? Okay, and probably Keto. That's probably what. No, no. <laughs> Can you read the verses? It's right, like you I'll were read reading at your for okay, yourself. These yeah. are the names of the sons of Ishmael listed in the order of their birth. Uh, honestly, you want to pronounce them? Navajoth, number one. Kedar, then. Where's Kedar? Sorry. Kedar is there. Number oh, there, two. Yeah, number yeah, two. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And there are many more. Okay. Yeah. Twelve sons. Yeah, that was my okay. Point. Now, yeah. now. Kedar is in Arabia. We have already established that. Yeah, since we are sitting in Arabia. And he is the second son of Ishmael. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, okay, so where do you think Ishmael was? In Arabia. Thank you. That's, but, that's but, my point. Okay, okay, now. How do we know now, that now, was now, descended from okay, that? Okay, okay, now, okay, we, we're, now you're jumping to all together another point. Remember you made a claim that how do we know Ishmael was in Arabia? Or Arabs are the children of Ishmael, yeah. right? Yeah, no, I've, just shown every you, point. I've just shown you yeah. that. And so this is the second point you have been corrected on. Agreed? Well, no, I, I was ha happy to accept it. As soon as you made that first point. No, no, you challenged me. When I said the Arabs were generally speaking, yeah. uh, the period we are addressing, 7th century BC before Christ, yeah. right? The Arabs were the children yeah. of, yeah. generally speaking, yeah, not all Arabs, of yeah. course, because they were outskirts, but these Arabs we are talking about in particular, yeah. Kedar in particular, yeah, his children, they are in Arabia. Yeah. It's you, my, you know so well Paran, 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 Paran we are so, so, so no, 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 wait, 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 wait. Paran is Arabia. This is the point I'm trying to make, yeah, uh, highlight, sure. because according to chapter, uh, book of Genesis chapter 21, Verses 17 onwards, Ishmael was left in Paran, Paran by his father. Yeah. And then he had children. He got married in Arabia, he had children, and then 12 sons. Kedar is clearly in Arabia because his children are in Arabia, according to the book of Isaiah, chapter 21, 13, yeah. a prophecy regarding Arabia. So this is very clear now. This is why we connect Deuteronomy 33, 2, to this prophecy in Deuteronomy 18, 18. Why? Because that prophecy says, Lord came from Sinai. He, ro he, 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 he rose from Mount Sire and he shone forth from Mount Paran. Three locations. Yeah, but that, that Let me finish. Prophecy Let me finish, please. Let me finish. That it's particular a, prophecy. Wait, I'm man. Talk for wait. Ages, man. I'm finishing you just right made now. Point. I'm finishing okay, right you now. Finish, right. Okay. It mentions Deuteronomy 33, oh, no, no, no. 2 mentions three locations Sinai, yeah. Moses. It's yeah. connected to Moses. Sire, uh, uh, Sire or Sa'ir yeah, in I've the Arabic uh, mountain range in Palestine. Paran is Arabia. So three individuals. You do definitely accept Moses from Sinai. You accept it's uh, not Jesus. Three individuals. Let's have a look three at three locations. Verse. I said. Yeah, three, three locations. locations. Three locations. These are the locations that Israel travelled in the Exodus. Okay, wait. I am saying these are three locations, right? Yeah. Distinct locations, yeah. and they are connected to three distinct personalities. No. no. Okay. No. Okay. They are the places that Israel travelled through the wilderness. Okay. So what's happening but, in Paran? Right. He's, he's shown. He's shown. He's shown forth. He's shown forth from Paran. Paran is Arabia, and he came with ten thousand saints. So what happened in Paran? What so you've happened? Given your how did Lord? Brethren. How did Lord shone forth from Paran, from Arabia? What happened in Arabia? Well, because Israel moved through there. Yeah, if the people of Israel moved through so there. Why is Lord shining forth? Like, I mean, through his people. When you read the verse, because, because it, it says that he rose. Let's have a look at the verse. Okay, yeah, look at the verse, please. What is it? Genesis, Deuteronomy thirty-three two. What the verse is saying. There is, and then once and you finish, there is, brethren, I want to there make is my a gradual there. elevation of the Lord, so to say, yeah, in the biblical language. That it starts from Sinai, it goes further up in Sair, and it reaches its peak in Paran. It reaches its peak in Arabia. So what happened in Arabia? Okay, read. So let's read this passage. Yes, please, right? please. This is the blessing that Moses, the man of God, pronounced on the Israelites before his death. Okay. He said, "The Lord came from Sinai." You're reading the okay, yeah, right, yeah. and yeah. dawned over them from Seir. Okay. He shone forth from Mount Paran. Yes. He came with myriads of holy ones okay. from the south, from his mountain slope. Surely it is you who love the people. All the holy ones are in your hand. At your feet they all bow down, etc., etc. The law that Moses gave us, the possession of the assembly of Jacob. He was king over Jeshuram, Jeshuram when the leaders of the people assembled. Do you want to keep going, or is that what you? Hey, want? You want you wanted to read all of okay. that. I, I'm, I'm, so, I'm concerned about one verse. So, so okay. it seems to me here that this is a blessing being pronounced over oh, okay. the, so over the nation the of Israel. It's a prophecy, right? Well, no, it's not a prophecy. Okay. It's actually describing what's just happened. Okay. What happened? What's happened is that happened God has delivered 
God has brought Israel out of Egypt through all these areas to the place where they are today where, where, at the point of this writing. The Jews when never, about to, enter to my the knowledge, land. in the time of Moses never made it to Arabia. Did you know that? They crossed through, they crossed, no. Sinai. Look, they crossed through the Red Sea. Right through okay, where that area. Where, where did they go? And, and as well, Arabia, you're thinking down the Moses, bottom where Mecca Moses. is, but Arabia is much higher. It can be all of that. Okay, so Arabia is so higher. If you look, if is, you look is, at Arabia, is Mecca Arabia? Is this, Mecca Arabia? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know, but this isn't saying Mecca. It's not saying Mecca. It's just no, saying no. Um, Dedan, you, Kida. Uh, okay. You know, these okay, wait, wait. I will Let's prove, my, I'll prove my point. Wait, wait, I'll prove my point. Wait. Now you're saying Mecca is not Arabia. I'm saying Paran is Mecca. I'm saying that right now here standing in front of you. Have you got evidence saying, for that? Yes. Do, go. Genesis. You want to go to Genesis? Now? Chapter okay. 21 verse 17. And then the last point because I want to make, uh, uh, I want to give course, my argument as to course, who the brethren of is. Of course. I'm saying Paran is Mecca. Oh, yes, the wilderness of Paran which is being addressed in Deuteronomy 33 to this verse is directly talking about Mecca. So, so what happened what? in Mecca? Genesis what? 21, chapter 21. Verse 17. What's happening to Ishmael? Tell us. So uh, God heard the boy crying. This is when they were God the heard the boy crying. Read, read loud so that yeah, we can God, all hear. God heard the boy crying, and yeah. the angel of the Lord called to Hagar from heaven and said to her, "What is the matter, Hagar? Do not be afraid. God has heard the boy crying as he lies there. Lift the boy up and take him by the hand, for I will make him into a great nation." Okay, okay. Twenty-one. Sorry, verse twenty-one. Twenty-one. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. While he was living in the desert of Paran, his mother got a wife for him from Egypt. Okay, I want to talk about, I want to address the point where it talks about the well, the well of water that was, that, that emerged as a miracle under his feet. Okay, this is what I want to talk about. It's there in chapter 21. Wait, sorry. Okay. Verse 21. No, 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 not verse 21, sorry. Uh, okay, yeah. Then she went, from verse 16, then she went off and sat down about a, a bow shot away. For she thought, I cannot watch the boy die. And as she sat there, she began to sob. God heard the boy crying and, and the angel of God called to Hagar. Okay, where is the discussion on the well? Yes. The God opened her eyes and she saw a well of water. Verse 19. Same chapter. Genesis 21 verse 19. Then God opened her eyes and she saw a well of water. So she went and filled the skin with water and gave the boy a drink. Why am I mentioning this? Yeah, why are you mentioning it? <laughs> you know the biggest source of water in the Paran Valley, the Valley of Paran, which is usually called Hijaz. You know where it is? No. The well of Zamzam in Mecca. Well, okay. It hasn't dried. Okay, it hasn't oh. dried to this day. So that, that's okay. your argument as to why it's present. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. So, so you all, want to all indicators. Do you want to yeah, yeah, that, absolutely. And then I'll give my the well of Zamzam, the water that came out for, Ish, for Ishmael, for Ishmael, was in the city of Mecca. Is in the city of Mecca to this day. So Puran, where Ishmael was left, specifically where the water came out was the valley of Puran, was a specific point and that point is Mecca. Okay. So when Lord came from Sinai, rose forth from, uh, 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 you can call them assumptions. I'm saying if this was about Jesus, I'm saying if this was about Jesus, the Christians would go to Scandinavia, then to Alaska, then to South America, then to Australia and then come back to Britain to prove okay. that it was Jesus. Right. Like you do with all the prophecies yeah. about Jesus, right? Yeah. You use so many so reasons, so many indicators to prove that it's Jesus. And we're saying directly these yeah. references are there about Arabia. Something's happening in Arabia. The book of Isaiah, the entire chapter 42 is talking about something so happening in Arabia. To another, another no, we're not going to another one. I'm just mentioning you're, you're the side points. I think it's time for me to say yeah. something. Now. Okay. I just want to ask you a quick why question. Do the Christian, ask you a quick why question. do the Christians forget that, agree, that approach? If you agree that the word brethren can mean the fellow Israelites, and the Arabs. Yeah, but you agree, right? Yes. Why would you choose one over the other? Good. Very good Just question. Just a short answer, a, fair, a summary answer. A fair question. Why? Because what the prophecy says otherwise fits in to the context of like Muhammad, what? for like example. What? For example, for example, let me give you my quick, quickly. Yeah, quickly yeah. So Moses like prophet. Moses like, okay? Prophet. 
because it's not talking about Moses like person. Moses, yeah, Moses I'm, like we've human. We've discussed what okay. that means. Yeah, yeah. Okay, you asked me, so let me quickly clarify what I mean. Yeah, his prophethood would be like Moses. Whatever qualities Moses came with as a prophet, as a messenger, this is what God is talking about, right now. No one brought a new law except Muhammad. Even Jesus did not bring a new Torah. Moses came with the Torah, a comprehensive law. Only Muhammad, who came from Arabia, from Paran, brought that comprehensive law. Okay, Muhammad governed as a prophet. So did Moses. He governed his people as a prophet. He implemented law. He punished people. He applied the law of God on his people. Okay, Jesus, no Israelite prophet ever did that after Moses. Okay, I mean, there were few. They were, I mean, I mean, of course, uh, let, me, let me quickly summarize my point. They did. David, Solomon, Joshua, these people did apply the same law, but the law was the Torah. Okay. Muhammad came with a new law, a, a, a revision of the law of God, which is foretold okay. again uh, in the book of I, the reason. I mean, the reason now, now why I want to give why I think it's talking about the fellow. Sure, please do, and I'll let you talk for as long okay. as you want, okay, right? You. Uh, so, in, in Isaiah 42, this law is. Go to another one. <laughs> uh, no, no, no. I'm trying to give you references as to why we believe because comprehensive. Yeah, but you've made your point. I think that's that's a simple. Last point. point and, and last that's point. That's last point. The reason why it is not another Israelite prophet like Moses, even Jesus himself. Is not like Moses in that sense, in the prophetic sense, because the prophecy remained unfulfilled, and Jesus himself, so, Jesus himself denied being that prophet. Okay, now my turn. Yeah. So now, did you did you understand the last sentence? Yeah. Jesus no, denied. He didn't deny being that prophet. Okay, now that's the point we need to come back to that, next time. Yeah. Next, so, next in the next uh, session. Maybe another debate. <laughs> um, so. Uh, the reason why I think it's fellow Israelites, first of all, is because within the context, if you look, that Jesus is uh, sorry that uh, Moses is talking about the authority of Israel. So he talks about kings, and he says in chapter 17 that you shall not uh, put a. I'll just read it to you. When it says uh, in uh, chapter 17, just the chapter before, when you enter the land the Lord your God is giving you and have taken possession of it and settled in it, and you say, let us set a king over us, like all the other nations around us, be sure to appoint over you a king the Lord your God chooses. He must be from among your brethren. Do not place a foreigner over you, one who is not an Israelite. So it seems very close here. The context seems to be talking about... Um, Where is this you're reading from? This is chapter 17, okay. um, uh, verse 14. So it's just a chapter okay. before that it's talking about the, the but this brethren. this is not connected to the brethren. The second reason... I, I, there's no, there's no that, connection here. Well, yeah, because if you look at the overall context, it's talking about the authority within so, Israel. So, likewise... Yeah, I, I didn't cut you off. Yeah, you sure, sure, sure. So um, you had the kings, you have um, the Levites is also mentioned in chapter 17, uh, sorry, chapter 18, the same chapter. But the other reason why it's talking about brethren is because, as I said earlier in the beginning of the debate, it's in your midst, in your inner parts, the word kereb, which is applied. Okay, so give to, me a prophet on, like please, Moses, please, please. in their so, midst. So yeah, in their midst. So when give it me says a like Moses. Moses, the point that I made at the beginning, which yes. you seem to have quickly forgotten about, is like Moses, is not talking about any old thing like Moses. It's something agree. very specific. Yes. The specific thing is that it says, The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among you, from your brethren. You must listen to him, for this is what you ask yes. of the Lord your God at Horeb right. okay. on the day the assembly of yes. the assembly, when you said, Let us not hear the voice of God. Or uh, the Lord our God, nor see this great fire anymore, okay. lest we die. So, like Moses, is someone who directly speaks to God okay. directly, and hears His revelation as a general principle, receives that revelation, and then imparts that to the people. Okay. Now, you said Muhammad at one time spoke to God, but as a general rule, according to the Islamic tradition, Muhammad did not speak directly to God when he received his revelation, whereas this is saying that Moses neither, did. Neither so, did Moses. Yes, he did. He did not. He did. As a general rule, as a general rule, Moses was always, always speaking to God. Yeah. I, I asked you this question earlier. Yeah. As a general the rule, he received of the law, his revelation. The entirety, he, would up, he would go up, receive his revelation, and he would share it with the people. Okay. Now, I'll tell you why this prophet is still unfulfilled. Oh, this and prophecy. Jesus did that. Jesus spoke directly to God. Okay. Jesus spoke. He came by the Father. No, Jesus he, is God. He said, yeah, Jesus yeah, is God. Yeah, the Trinity. So, yeah. so he's, he's not like Moses. Yes, he is. 
Yeah, no, Moses, like, like Moses. Like Moses, it's not any old thing because otherwise he would have to be an Israelite. No, no, because but Jesus, Moses was Jesus is God. Moses was an Israelite. Jesus so, can't, so Jesus can't Muhammad, be. It can't Jesus, be Muhammad because he wasn't okay. an Israelite. That's okay. the kind of argument you're making. No, right? let me explain so what why. I'm trying to say. Yeah, is I'm that saying like Jesus Moses denied being that prophet. Mean, like Moses doesn't mean any old okay. thing like Moses. Let me give you a direct. It specifically to the fact. That very clear in the context that Moses okay. spoke directly okay. to God for the people. Let, let me give you my argument why, why, okay. Firstly, before I move on to the next point, very quickly. I've actually, actually, I've actually got to go. I, no, no, we'll finish soon. I've actually got to go. No, I've no go. problem. We'll finish, we'll, we'll, I've actually we'll, we'll, we'll right. finish very soon. Uh, if I show you that that prophet is not Jesus, if I show you conclusively, that's the, that's the condition. Is the door open for Muhammad then? No, it could be Paul. Why not Paul? Because Paul was uh, more. Paul, Paul was Paul spoke a less. To God too. No, no. Paul was less of a candidate than Jesus. No. I'll show well, you why. Yeah, well, yeah. I'll well, show you why. I agree. Jesus is the candidate. Jesus Thank you. Is the one. Okay, let's but see if Jesus. I would. I, I would easily argue it's Paul. So why not Muhammad? What's your problem Muhammad. with Muhammad? Why? What's your problem with Muhammad? Was he? Is what's your issue? Well, because it, what, he uh, teaches, what if he was truly a prophet of God and foretold in the Bible? What 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 if that is the I case? I don't know reason to believe Muhammad was a prophet. Okay, no problem. You don't have any reasons yet. But if you were shown conclusive reasons, uh, and when we do meet in the future, we will talk about Isaiah 42. Yeah. Isaiah 42, we'll see whether that fits Muhammad or not. Yeah. Okay, I'm asking if Muhammad turns out to be a very viable option for that prophecy, then what? If if that's the case, then a, what? A viable option. Yes. Yeah, if the, if, I, I don't think just because you think that it's possible he could fit the criteria. I don't think that would be. I, enough I'm saying to if go. if he is, if, oh, he, if is. he fits it. Yeah. Well, if he fits it, he fits it, doesn't he? So, that, that, that means he's a true prophet of yeah, God. Well, if he, okay. If, if someone fits that, prophecy, I'll tell you why Jesus is if, not that if, prophet. If, if it's definitely evidence that he, that that is that prophecy talking about him. Yes. Well, right. But I don't think there is. Okay. No problem. Uh, I'll tell you why Jesus is not that prophet. In the Gospel of John. When John the Baptist is baptizing people in the River Jordan, you are aware of it, yeah. right? People came and asked him three questions. What were those three questions? Uh, are you Elijah? Are you the prophet? Are you the Messiah? Okay. One of those. When they asked him, "Are you the Elijah?" What did he say? Uh, no. He said no. He wasn't Elijah. Okay. Not not the physical uh, Elijah. Well, according to the Book of Matthew, he was the Elijah. According to yeah, Jesus. Yeah, yeah. That's because yeah, there's I a think confusion Luke, there. Now. Luke, okay. um, Luke yeah. actually. Um, when the angel Gabriel actually yeah. speaks to um, Zechariah as uh, John the Baptist's father, right. he Gabriel understands that passage to mean someone coming in the spirit and power of Elijah. Okay. So, so he was right to say no to that. Okay. But he was still a fulfillment of that prophecy. Okay. okay. I, I, I leave. I leave the confusion for you to solve. Okay. Well, Second question: Are solve. you are you the Christ, the Messiah? No, he's, he, he, he said, said no. no. Who was the Christ? Jesus, but he didn't say Jesus was the Christ directly right then and there. No, he didn't say that. He didn't say that. I'm saying who was the Christ to you? Uh, Jesus. Yeah. Jesus. Are you that prophet? That prophet. Yeah. And what were they referring to? Well, probably Deuteronomy 18. Yeah. Not probably. Yeah. Biblical right. scholars. Most likely. Biblical Most scholars. Likely are, yeah. passage, no, yeah. biblical I'm scholars. Much agreeing with you. Okay, good, good. Yeah. We're in agreement. That means up to that point when. John the Baptist in the first century CE is baptizing people in the River Jordan. The prophecy remains unfulfilled. No, yes? no. All, all that means is that the, the, the Jews saw a distinction. The Jews at that time saw a distinction between that prophet and the Messiah. Yes. But, but if we see uh, other passages, I'm pretty sure Peter applies it to Jesus in the book of Acts uh, in his sermon uh, on Pentecost. So I have to double check that. But um, Yes, double check it. Yeah, but, but it does seem to me that okay, just I'm, because the Jews thought they were two different people doesn't mean it was necessarily so okay. because the then, Jews got lots then, of things then, wrong then, about then the good, 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 no problem. I am asking now, if the Jews were wrong about forming a distinction in these three persons, mm -hmm. that the Elijah is separate to the Christ and the Christ is separate to that prophet, okay? They can all... They, That's what not, they thought. That was their, no, 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 was no. I, I'm leading to a point. I'm leading yeah. to a point. If the Jews were wrong in that distinction, forming a distinction between these three people, why did why did Jesus not controvert that? Why did John the Baptist remain? Was John a prophet of God? Well, probably because like probably. They, yeah, now listen, listen to me. Look, no, no, I, John, I John the, the Baptist. Probably. No, no, I wasn't answering your question. I was yeah. answering your first so question. Right. Said, no, no, finishing right now. Because you bring Maghreb and. Uh,
You're gonna leave after Maghrib? Okay. Yeah, sure. uh, we're just finishing right now. Okay. And we're gonna leave. I'm gonna leave with you guys. Okay. Just I'll have to think about that message you mentioned, by the way. The one in Samuel. You got a lot of homework to do. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, the point is, um, yeah. So if the Jews were wrong in forming that distinction between three persons, if they were wrong, as you are claiming they were wrong, John the Baptist, who is a prophet of God, listening to rubbish, listening to errors and mistakes, his job is to correct them. Like Jesus corrected the Jews many times. Yeah, but sometimes, okay? yeah, but sometimes um, Jesus didn't, and John the Baptist perhaps as well, didn't correct people because he knew they So they the left them in, 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 in yeah, error? left them in error. Like, I it, don't agree it, with very, that. Very clearly, that's why Jesus spoke so why in was parables, Jesus, it says. So why, why was because he correcting Because their hearts them? were already hardened and he just left them to the hardness but of their heart. But why was he correcting them at, at, at other times? On lesser important issues. You'd have to show me issues. an example so I can show you why in that situation he corrected when, when Jesus, But we know for sure that Jesus clearly spoke in parables, it says, so that they wouldn't hear because they had already rejected so much. He got to the point where he didn't want them to hear anymore. So are you not aware of any examples of Jesus correcting the Jews? Yeah, yeah. On minor uh, issues? Top, top of my head, I'm getting a bit tired because I've been here all, all okay. days. So there are many, many places. That, you, so you have to so give me this, this was an issue of to. utmost yeah, importance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah, yeah. prophet. Who is that prophet? Why don't you Who wrap is still? Up and I'll wrap up. Yeah? Okay, that's it. I'm done. Okay, I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> well, I guess I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> nice talking to you. I, I think it's really I, I forgot chat. your name. I'm Caleb. Caleb. Hey, Caleb. Yeah, Caleb. Yeah. Nice to talk. Nice to talk to you. Uh, Thank you very much. I've seen your debate, so yeah. I do I appreciate. No worries. You no worries. With it's me. my I thought, honor. It's my I thought pleasure. I wouldn't get the honor of chatting with you, so. No, 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 <laughs> but no, no, I did. No, no. So that's no, great. I, I, I always like talking to people where I can have a decent discussion, like we did. You spoke. I spoke, and and we leave leave the. Yeah. Leave the judgment to the audience. Yeah. Let them decide. <laughs> All good. the brothers and sisters out there, Christians and Muslims. And the main issue is, the main point I want to highlight is that you as a Christian, I as a Muslim, we have come together, we've had a decent discussion, we've we have. shown the world that it can be done. And this is yeah. why I have debates with your scholars and your, you yeah. know, I went to Australia and had debates with Samuel Green and uh, yeah, and, yeah, Bernie Powers, and yeah. I disagreed with them heavily. Yeah. We had we have we had huge disagreements, yeah. but we were able to hug each other yeah, and walk away. Yeah, I've seen happily. your debates with James White as well. Nice so, talking um, to you. Okay, yeah, thank cool. you so much Thanks, for your time. So, just in summary of that, I had a really good uh, debate with uh, Adnan, and he made some points that I wasn't aware of about Arabia, which was great. But I do think that when we look at Deuteronomy 18, it does seem very clear that it is a prophet that must come from the midst of Israel. The Hebrew word is Kereb. And uh, also I think it's very clear that the prophet must be like Moses. And like Moses means someone who speaks directly to God. That's the very context when you read uh, verse 14, 15, 16 through to 18, that it is a prophet that speaks directly to God and then takes that uh, information and gives it to the people. Whereas Muhammad, as a general rule, although in uh, uh, the tradition of Islam, spoke to God once, but generally he received his revelation through Gabriel and not through uh, God directly. Uh, and that is uh, something that was only fulfilled by Jesus, who spoke directly from the far by the Father, was sent from the Father, and uh, delivered what the Father told him to deliver.